Thank you, Lord Jesus. I'd like to talk about three things. The advocacy of Christ, the promise of Christ, and the deliverance of Christ, Christ Jesus, our Lord. He is mighty to save. I thank the Lord for delivering my soul, pulling me out of madness. I've said it before, I'll, I'll say it again without shame. I know I'd be in hell already, I'd be dead and in hell if it wasn't for the advocacy of Christ. Hallelujah. In First John, he says, uh, My little children, these things write I unto you, that you sin not. If any man uh, sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Oh, I love him. Oh, I love him. And I thank him how he suffered and he bore my sin and he shed his blood that we can come before the very throne of God, that we can bring our case before him. Oh, hallelujah. Just uh, briefly, a few things, if I can, to encourage someone. Maybe you're struggling in this life and things just don't seem fair. Maybe your boss is cheating you. I've had that happen. Um, or they take money out of your check for insurance or something and go to the hospital and they haven't paid it. And you're struggling. People don't do right all the time, but we find our help and our justice in heaven before the very throne of God, the courts of heaven, in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank him that I have found mercy. I don't ask for justice. I ask for mercy. But sometimes we need things to be fixed. And he will fix it. And so I thank God for that. Hallelujah. That his ears are open unto the cry of the humble and the poor and the oppressed. But God gives us help and hope and comforts us in our trials and our adversities. It's kind of windy out here. I just want to read a verse and then shut this Bible. Um, I love my Bible. I hate for it. Anything to happen. I get kind of particular. <laughs> Somebody says, Oh, let me read that. I'm like, I don't know, brother. <laughs> uh, these pages are precious. They're so precious, the life giving and the comfort that's in these pages. So let me just read these few verses. Uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1. Uh, For every high priest taketh. For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way, for that he himself also is compassed with infirmity. And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. And so also Christ glorified not himself to be made a high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son, today have I begotten thee. And he saith also in another place, Thou art a priest forever, after the order of Melchizedek who in the days of his flesh, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. So I thank the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. He walked this earth. He walked the walk. He was tested and tried and 
more than just the wilderness, even in his ministry and in his life, they were always testing him and tempting him and, and trying him. Oh, but he came forth. Hallelujah. He was tempted in all points like we as we are, yet without sin. O oh, glory, our high priest, holy and separate from sinners, now in heaven. Hallelujah, our advocate. Hallelujah. In heaven, O oh, glory, our mediator. And Job, you may remember all of his troubles and sorrows and grief and his um, comforters, his poor friends who uh, tried to help but just didn't, uh, didn't have it. They did not have the comfort that he needed. But we found, he found comfort in God. In chapter 9 uh, of Job, he says, For there is not a man, excuse me, for he is not a man as I am, that I should answer him, and we should come together in judgment. Neither is there any days man betwixt us that might lay his hand upon us, upon us both. And that is the great cry of the human condition, the human heart in this life and all of our trials. And we see the injustice and the, and the wickedness and the evil in, in high places. And it just seems like a man can't. A man can't get the help he needs. Sometimes we just need a break. We just need a break. And God will help us. Hallelujah. To make the most of it. And an opportunity. Sometimes that's all a man needs in his life. Hallelujah. And the God's oh, glory. I was praying. This was years ago on a mission trip. I was uh, there uh, in my own experience, God, and in His grace and mercy provided sponsors for me. But I was working day labor um, just to, to minister the gospel of Christ and to pray with fellas coming off a of dope and coming off a street and off the street and, and earnestly seeking the Lord you know, to be some help, to be of a servant and have uh, the right heart and uh, a good character uh, to be a blessing and uh, months went by and there was a real difficulty there was a coldness uh, there between uh, the leadership and myself and and I couldn't understand it um, and I was praying and praying and praying and I, one day I just felt like uh, the Lord said, you know, I've taken your case. I've taken your case. And it brought, brought great uh, joy to me, knowing that God had heard my uh, cries, you know, my, my distress. You know, I cried out to the Lord. And uh, he gave me that promise that he had taken my case, uh, meaning that he had heard my prayers. And so I'm so grateful to God for that. And I didn't really think much of it. But one day I told the leadership, I said, you know, there's a wall between us and I don't understand it. But I didn't put it there. And I understand it. You know, you see a new face and maybe uh, ministries are cautious, necessarily cautious and um, maybe not always forthcoming. But I just didn't feel that, uh, uh, you know, that those opportunities were there um, for a real relationship. And I couldn't understand it. And, but I, I, I would get up early and just pray and pray and pray just to make sure that I had the right character before God, that my, my motives were pure before God, that my heart was in the right place. Just a willingness to serve and be a blessing and help uh, carry that burden and see it through to victory. Um, and uh, sure enough, um, uh, not long after that, I heard from the Lord. Um, the There was a failure uh, in, in the power grid, and there was no electricity and no water. And it was hot, 2 degrees, and yet we were still going out and doing daily work. 
And it was a great joy to do it, just to work with the fellas and be have that shared suffering, that shared sacrifice, and really pressing in, you know, to serve the Lord. And, and you know, whatever you do, you do heartily as unto the Lord. But it was a it was a real test and a trial. But yet I knew the presence of the Lord was with me. Um, in John 14 and 16, he says, I will pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter. That's the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the Paracletos, our helper and our strength, that he may abide with you forever, even the spirit of truth. So I knew the comfort and the strength of the Holy Spirit in all these uh, tests and trials. And this is what really I pray that if you're new to the ministry or you want to go on the mission field, that you understand this, that there are uh, adversities. There are going to be things you don't understand, and there's going to be cultural differences. There's going to be all kinds of things that may be overwhelming for you. Um, but I just pray the Spirit of Truth, the Comforter, the Great Paracletos, will minister grace uh, to your spirit that you will really uh, uh, be diligent in your prayer life to lay hold of the promise of God and trust Him to be of use and service to him and to God's people. Well, I prayed and um, the power got cut off and uh, there was no lights, but they asked me to preach that night. And here it was, I, I guess, a few months, three months almost. Um, and so this was going to be my first opportunity to share the good word of God. Um, and it was simply because I had a few verses laid up in my heart. And there was no light, um, there was no water, but yet uh, the Lord opened the door and I wanted to be faithful to present the good word of God. And so I preached, it's already 12 minutes here, so I pray God will have mercy. You just bear with me for a minute, I think this is important. Um, and dealing with adversity and trusting God to really set things right and that we can be useful in His service. And I preached on, the Lord gave me Psalms 3, and I preached it, and I didn't intend to go that way, but you may remember Psalms 3 was David when he was on the run from Absalom. And he cried out to God. And somehow the, the service went in the direction of David. How David had sinned uh, with Bathsheba and um, also had her husband killed. And he was going to church. After, uh, he was going to church. He married her. He was going to raise the child. And, and he tried to do the right thing. But yet he had not repented. And it's so true sometimes of good church people. Go to church and try to do the right thing and yet have not repented and truly uh, reconciled um, with God and made your peace with God over that thing and have that guilt and that burden and that shame uh, laying upon your life. But the Lord Jesus Christ, he delivers a man from those things. But that's the direction that it went. And so it turned into, uh, thou art the man. Uh, and I had no intention of that. But yet, um, it, I preached it as boldly and clearly as I could. Well, this uh, uh, leader in the ministry uh, was translating for me. And he was shaking. He was shaking the whole time, and I couldn't understand. I mean, I preached it as strongly and as I could. I really felt a spirit of might um, and spirit of truth, you know, in the service. And I, but I didn't understand it afterwards. Everybody turned their back on me. I, I couldn't understand it. Uh, said that I was preaching condemnation. Um, that they that. Even though they're trying to do right, they still have not repented. They're still bragging about their sin. They take hours and hours to prepare their clothes and all these things to get ready for the service and not take 15 minutes to prepare their heart uh, to come before God in, in the worship service. Um, so I, I suppose it was pretty bold and pretty plain, but I didn't understand it. 
And the next day, um, the leadership went to the pastor and confessed that he was in adultery and stealing money from the church. And um, I didn't know how to take it, but they uh, obviously this was their friend. And uh, they didn't receive it very well either. But uh, God set things in order and uh, brought, I think, uh, his justice to the house of God to clear that thing out of there. And uh, so, um, and then when I left, um, I think they were still upset about it. They didn't even pray, uh, but pray me out and bless me out. But, you know, years later, I did see the pastor, and um, he was happy to see me, and, and even called me a man of God, which I thought was a, a true compliment. Um, but I guess this brother has been restored now. But it was very hard. And how do you deal with adversity? How do you deal with... Um, uh, things when they don't uh, appear to be in order. And that is to bring your case before God, to bring your your prayers, your supplications, you know, your, your cries to God and ask Him to fix it. And so I just wanted to have a word of encouragement with you, uh, just to encourage you to press in and bring your case before God and, and trust Him and to trust Him to make it right. Trust the Lord Jesus Christ. He is worthy. He knows all about suffering. He knows all about injustice. He knows all about betrayal. And uh, I just pray that you'll trust him to make it right, to make it right in your life. Well, God bless you. I, I pray that you are strengthened in your faith, that you're encouraged. Uh, hallelujah to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our mediator. There is one mediator. Let me read that real quick here. For there is one mediator. For there is one God and one mediator between God and man. And man, and that is Christ Jesus, our Lord. Well, God bless you. I pray that you have fun and stay safe and give God the glory in everything.